What's cracking? Welcome back to the HQ. If you're joining us on YouTube or the podcast, glad to have you back. It's your boy Nicholas. Big dogs got to eat. BDGE fantasy football. It's mock draft Monday, so we're getting back into it. Memorial Day Monday. That's what we're doing. So happy, uh, happy MD Dubs. I hope y'all had a better weekend than I did. I, uh, I on Saturday. I, I went to brunch with my friends in Brooklyn, like the, you know, the unlimited brunch or whatever in the city. If you've done it, you know what I'm talking about. If you know, you know, like Pusha T, like Pusha T says. Uh, yeah, we got pretty wasted. And then uh, we were in, we went back to Manhattan and we came across this speakeasy. I guess my friend knew about it and he just randomly pulled us into the store. And then in the back, they have the bar, right? Because it's like hidden from everyone else. And there was a drink on the menu. That had absinthe in it. Um, for all you young folk that are unsure of what absinthe is, or if you've never seen the movie Euro Trip, I would highly suggest you do that. One, two, uh, yeah, we had absinthe that night, and I'm not kidding. I don't really black out ever, if you know, often, if ever. Uh, I don't really remember anything after we drank absinthe. So uh, I forget what I was saying, but yeah, this weekend wasn't fun. So I hope you guys had a much better weekend, and I'm ready to get back to work. No more of that nonsense, childish shit. So we're doing a mock draft. We're doing it on Fantasy Pros. This is the Draft Wizard. So for you guys that are unaware of what this is, um, it's a customizable mock draft thing. And I'll link this down in the description. It'll be the first link so you guys can go practice on it. You're playing against computers, basically expert rankings. So you're not playing against other people. I like to do it on this because I can actually talk in the middle of the picks and stuff uh, and kind of give you guys breakdowns and explanations of who I went with, why, where, all that kind of stuff. Uh, rather than, you know, because I'm clumsy as hell. If you watch my mock drafts, I miss picks all the time and the timer runs out and I can't really get my points across. So sometimes I like to mix it up and do it here. Um, and I'll be mixing them up throughout the the summer. Uh, so you guys drop some comments below which platforms you want to see it on, whether I know Yahoo's open now. So whether it's Yahoo, uh, what kind of drafts you want to see. Today, we're going to be doing a two quarterback league draft or um, as some people would come to call it a super flex league. So super flex is a flex league where the flex spot can be used as a quarterback. And I'll get that. I'll get into that more. So you always want to use a quarterback in your super flex spot. Um, but yeah, we're doing a two quarterback league draft today. We're going to do 12 teams. I'm going to draft from the fifth spot pretty much. And when you're on the draft wizard, you can customize pretty much everything, right? 2018 season, what kind of scoring you want to do. And if you make uh, an account, like I have an account on this, you can do your league's custom scoring settings. So if you do like six point per passing touchdown, or if you do, you know, so anything like weird like that, they let you customize it and put it into the scoring settings so that, uh, so it's very customizable. It's pretty good to practice on. And it's like the expert ranking. So for, for the most part, the ADP is pretty good. Uh, but let's get into the draft. You know, and you can do it. There's no clock or anything. You do it on your own time. So this is a two quarterback league draft. And, um, you know, in two quarterback leagues, I'll start off with this. And this is my biggest tip for everyone. And I talked about it in a few of my previous videos. Two quarterback leagues. I know a lot of people get strung up about it because quarterbacks start going very early and very often in these leagues. This is the number one tip I can give you, right? When you have your quarterback, like imagine you're drafting in a one quarterback league, right? And if you're a late round streamer, like most people are, and you can find a lot of good depth later at the position, so you don't really draft in that early, what you know when you're doing your one quarterback league who is the last quarterback of those streamers that you would be okay with as your starting quarterback right and you know they have the rankings here so say like for i'm just using it as an example uh say like number 18 marcus mariota is the last quarterback that you're okay starting as your one quarterback league starter right that's just normal things that and then you don't make it too complicated too confusing when you move over to two quarterback leagues now the strategy should be the same thing who is the last quarterback that you're okay starting as a starting quarterback on your team? It shouldn't change from one quarterback to two quarterback, right? You're not more excited about a certain player because it's a two quarterback league. Um, if that guy was Marcus Mariota, then it should still be Marcus Mariota um, as your, your low limit guy. And that just means you have to get Marcus Mariota at worst and another guy above him. It doesn't mean you need to spend your first two picks, your first two, three rounds on quarterbacks. You will need a third quarterback, and I'll get into that later and everything, but I don't want to make it too confusing. You just take, 
you know, you, you take your rankings of quarterbacks, guys that you're comfortable starting with, and you make sure that you get at least the last guy, the worst guy that you're okay starting with, and the guy above him. If you want to do, if you're a streamer, right? If you want to stream quarterbacks, or if that, you know, that's your strategy for two quarterback leagues, whatever. Um, that that's my personal strategy with it because it's pretty much the same thing. There's no there's no difference when you look at it from that strategy from one quarterback to two quarterback leagues. If you want to grab someone who's really good in the beginning, sure, you could do that as well. That's fine, but that's really no different than if you wanted to grab Aaron Rodgers in a one quarterback league either. You're still paying a premium price for it. So we have five picks off the board. Uh, went Bell, Gurley, Brown, Zeke, and this is a uh, half point PPR. Otherwise, very um, regular settings or whatever. Um, and I'm going to hide the drafted players here. Um, and DJ is my fifth or fourth ranked guy. So I'm going to go with DJ. I'm not going to start diving into quarterbacks yet because that's just not really my strategy. So you kind of have to know your league and see how quickly the quarterbacks go. Now we saw, what do we have? Three quarterbacks go Rogers, Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Tom Brady. Okay. So we had four quarterbacks go in the first two rounds and you kind of have to start thinking to yourself, like if Mariota is my cutoff guy, you know, how many more rounds do I have of these 10 guys being available? Now, you might want to not chance it and take one um, one higher guy now, and you'll have to, right? It all depends on your league. If, if you saw like seven quarterbacks go here, then you might want to um, play it a little safer and then grab one of these quarterbacks now. If if none of the quarterbacks went off the board and everyone's waiting, then you're probably okay to to uh, to wait on it. So that that's kind of my strategy when it comes to the two quarterback leagues. You'll, you'll see a lot of good flex players still available all the way down here at two eight. Um, and you know, I will say that when you're starting two quarterbacks, it's not a bad idea to kind of mix and match in terms of ceiling and floor. Like a guy like Cam, I love in two quarterback leagues because if you pair him with someone who's you know safer, uh, for instance, like. Matt Ryan, Jared Goff, uh, Stafford all have really nice floors, um, but I'm not sure their ceiling is is crazy high. So if, if you pair their floor with a guy like Cam, you'll get a consistent producer in one of those quarterbacks, but you'll also get the crazy upside you have with Cam, who obviously can go off for 60 to 80 rushing yards and a, and a rushing score on any given week. Um, so you get a good blend there. And that's, you know, that's something I like doing. So two quarterback leagues, rushing upside is always a, a good thing, but I wouldn't gamble with guy like two quarterbacks that you might think of as as risky um here we have let me see we got some good skill players still left so i'm probably going to wait um on quarterback still and grab a guy like fournette so i start off with dj and fournette uh, only one two more quarterbacks went off um, now is probably when i would think of grabbing my first quarterback because by the time it gets back to me, I'm sure another four or five guys might be off the board. Then again, guys, it all comes down to who you value at the position. Some of you guys might be okay with Eli Manning at like the 25th quarterback, right? You might be okay with him as your last possible starting quarterback. And if you're okay with that, it gives you even more leniency in a league like this. Um, for me, for instance, like um, I'm probably cool with probably up to like Andy Dalton, to be honest with you. But you definitely want to grab at least three quarterbacks, probably four if you have the luxury of doing that in your league, because obviously there's always a chance of injury. Um, and, you know, when you're doing two quarterback leagues, the thing is uh, you're not going to be able to find them on the waiver wire. Because if you're in a 10-team league, one, that means automatically 20 guys are off the board right away, just as the starters. And you know everyone's going to grab at least a third guy, right? So – that's pretty much anywhere between 25 and 30 quarterbacks. And if you do the math, there's only 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL, which means there's not going to be waiver wire pickups. So you need depth there. What, what if one of your guys busts or one of your guys gets injured, right? You need, uh, you need busts there. So, you know, even drafting guys like, you know, a Tyrod Taylor, um, and a Baker Mayfield are, are obviously both in play, right? One of them's not going to be the starter, but both of them have potential to give you weekly fantasy production, depending on who is starting. So you want to roster a decent amount of quarterbacks in these leagues. So we had two quarterbacks go off the board. Um, I'm actually probably going to wait even longer. Well, I, I would look at, I guess, value right now. We're looking at pick 305 in a 12 team league. It's like 30 something. So I still really, really like some of the guys on the board. So we have LaShawn McCoy, who is starting to go really late in drafts because the buzz is 
you know, it's like the cool thing to say McCoy is going to fall off. But now, you know, these things tend to sway very heavily back and forth throughout the offseason. Like it, immediately when I started doing research, I was like, McCoy is a guy I'm probably going to cool on. And now he's dropping pretty far. So we have guys like McCoy, McCaffrey, McKinnon, Joe Mixon. Um, and I'm, I'm getting higher and higher on, on the idea of McCaffrey. So we're doing two flexes, by the way. So that's my starting lineup right now. Uh, McCaffrey, boom. See, oh, only one quarterback, two quarterbacks, three quarterbacks off the board. Okay, so we have three quarterbacks off the board. And, you know, the, obviously the, the the center of your draft, like all your thought process should kind of be centered around quarterbacks when it comes to two QB and super flex leagues. And the reason is like, you know, the argument is not like you want to skip out on quarterbacks in the first couple rounds because you can get like such elite players. It's um, the floor of a quarterback, even a bad quarterback, right? Even if you have Alex Smith as your starting quarterback, his floor, his like weekly floor is probably between 14 and 16 fantasy points, right? And that's like really, 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 really good production from any normal fantasy player. So unless you're getting a guy like Odell Beckham, um, and you have six of those on your team in which you can afford to start at all your wide receiver and flex positions. If you're in a super flex league, I'm talking about not just the, there's a difference. The two quarterback leagues is when you have to start two quarterbacks. The super flex is usually one quarterback. And then the flex spot, you have the availability of starting the quarterback. But in those leagues, guys, you, you don't want to try to get cute and start a skill player over the quarterback because the floor of a quarterback is so much higher. Um, so, I mean, there's still a lot of value here at running back, even at wide receiver. Um, so I'll just, you know, I'm going to go along with the basically what I've been talking about. I'm going to lay off on quarterbacks for now and look at wide receivers. Um, I'm really liking the idea of getting Allen Robinson in the fourth. I just think like his target volume is going to be so high. So even if you're like, there are a lot of red flags there, right? We don't know if Trubisky is really going to blow up like they think he is. Um, you know, Robinson obviously is coming off the injury. He had a really bad year prior to the injury. So there are certainly question marks there. Uh, but I just I just think in the fourth round, you're getting a good mix of floor and um, and upside in Allen Robinson. If he can bounce back, he's still super young. Obviously, he's produced at elite levels. Um, so, you know, if you wait and you want to grab three running back, like I'm super happy with the DJ Fournette McCaffrey start there um, and, and having Allen Robinson as – as, as my first wide receiver off the board is perfectly okay with me. Okay, so we saw a little bit of run, more quarterbacks. Um, well, here's what I'm going to do. Again, it comes back to knowing your league again, guys. Like, I want Juju Smith real bad, right? I've probably taken him in almost all of my mock drafts. I'm trying to think, like, is he going to be back around next time I pick? Or would it be wiser for me to take a quarterback now and then grab Juju? We're going to play this all the way out. Screw it. Let's go. Let's go with you. Let's go with my man's JJSC. Okay, so five more quarterbacks off the board. Now is when I'm probably starting to look. Now, in terms of individual players, guys, I'm talking more about the theory of two quarterback leagues, not so much like I'm not going to sit here and be like, this is why I want Jameis Winston over Derek Carr or whatever. Um, but <sighs> Winston is – I just hate the coaching staff over there. I just think they've done a horrible job at developing the players and running this offense. But Jameis Winston has a great floor. Like when he plays, when he's healthy, he is very good. And we're actually going to look at this right now. We're going to look at some Jameis Winston numbers some splits i know he was banged up a lot last year he had a shoulder injury which definitely cost him some uh some production but when he was playing and fully healthy like when he came back at the end of the year I, um he was available in so many leagues and i remember like almost every single week my waiver wire pickup james winston was leading he was like the number one target guy on there for, um, for people who were looking to stream quarterbacks so He's a guy that when healthy, I'm very, very much okay having in my ooh, what did I do there? Having in my lineup as my quarterback. Guys, this is the Rotoviz Game Splits app. You can just type that in on Google, Rotoviz Game Splits, and you can look at splits. Um, I've talked about this at length at nauseum throughout the year. Uh, I don't even know what I'm really looking for. I guess I'll go with like a 
number of attempts. Clemson pass attempts over one, one, 10 attempts. Nope. Okay, so one, maybe two. Okay, so there's two games. Basically, that just filters out like if he had over 15 pass attempts. So it tells you any games that he might have got injured early or he wasn't, you know, he wasn't really throwing the ball or whatever. So that, you know, any game where you were like over 18 attempts or something means that you were definitely like the starting quarterback, right? And you were the guy in that game. So in his in his 11 games played last year, uh, he was putting up almost 24 fantasy points a game, 308 passing yards, almost two touchdowns. So Winston, guys, I know it was an off year, but look at the setup. Um, great weapons on the outside still, right? They uh, they have Chris Godwin coming into his second year, re-signed Cameron Brait, who's one of his favorite red zone targets. OJ Howard, of course, um, just a, a really good setup there in Tampa Bay. So uh, James Winston's a guy I'm totally, totally fine having as one of my starters for my in my two quarterback league. I like, I love, uh, I like both of these guys, Winston and Mario, the one and two picks in their respective years. They're the same year together, obviously they came in, but uh, Mariota with the new offense is 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 really nice. But Winston is uh, a guy that I'm okay having there, so he'll be my first quarterback picked here. And oh, luckily for me. No other quarterbacks went off the board. So now it comes down to like who who you are comfortable with having as your final QB. If it was like the example I said, Marcus Mariota, then you're going to have to go ahead and draft him here. Otherwise, you're going to be starting someone that you don't want. For me personally, uh, I'm probably OK with Mariota. Uh, I'm probably OK with Case Keenum, maybe Eli Manning. I'm working on a uh, my next video, I think, is going to be best streaming quarterbacks based off early season schedule. So got, you know, if you're a streamer, obviously you're usually taking a quarterback um, that you're okay with starting for the first few weeks. And then he's, he's probably droppable. So I look at the early season schedules of guys who have really easy matchups early on that you'll, that you, that you'd be okay streaming with and case Keenum's on that list. Um, a few other guys, but you'll, you'll get into that after, but I'm even okay with like Dalton as my starting quarterback. I don't remember what his schedule looks like early on, even Tyrod Taylor, man, they have a lot of weapons and Tyrod, Tyrod produced as a good fantasy quarterback in Buffalo when he had nothing there. So I'm, I'm okay with Tyrod in a two QB league, but you're going to want to grab, like I said, like two, three um, extra quarterbacks if you can. But we'll see what kind of value we still have on the board. Um, I'm still liking a lot of the running backs we have here, to be honest with you. Like Jay, I don't love JHI, but at, where are we at right now? Pick seven, five. That's really late. And, you know, as long as he's healthy, he's going to be the guy in Philadelphia for at least a, a little bit. Dar I like Darius Geis more than Ajayi, so I would take him there. So I like Sonny Michelle a lot too. Um, Marlon Mack, Royce Freeman. Even at this pick, you know, I, I don't like Ronald Jones, but I would be fine taking him here. So I'd probably go with another running back. Um, and I think I like – I'm going to go with Sonny Michelle. Sonny Michelle and Darius Geis are very, very, very close for me in terms of rookie running back rankings. I like Michelle because I, I look at Michelle in, in one of two ways, right? I know a lot of people are kind of like concerned, like, oh, it's the Patriots running backs. It's uh, we don't know what role Michelle is actually going to have. I, I think he's basically going to take one of two roles. And that is Deion Lewis last year, what we saw, uh, which was obviously high volume and involved in every part of the game. Or it could be like Garrett Blunt two years ago. And Sony Michelle is a much better actual running back than, than Blunt. But any team that, runs that many plays and and is in that scoring position as often as the Patriots are, you, you have a heavy upside regardless of even even if Sonny Michelle is not a 55%, 60% snap guy or even touch split, you know, that high, give him the goal line work, which he will get probably over Burkhead and obviously over James White and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, Michelle has like 12, 13, 14 touchdown upside if they give him that goal line role. So he doesn't need to be necessarily involved in the passing game to put up numbers like Deion Lewis did or LeGarrette Blunt did two years ago, right? You saw how many carries they had with LeGarrette Blunt two years ago, almost 300 carries. Um, so there's no reason why they couldn't do that again with Michelle. So um, Michelle's a guy I really like there. And I like guys too, but so, oh, wow, interesting. No quarterback went off the board again. Saying, Damn, I really like guys. So, <sighs> I want to go with, I know my starting, so my starting roster is, is done here, guys. And I am a person who still <clears throat> likes to go based on value. I don't like to draft based on um, on your starting roster. I don't think any of you guys should. And I think that plays even more so in bigger leagues 
So when you have like look at the the starting roster is very big for the league I just took. So it's two quarterbacks, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, two flexes. Um, so you're starting what like eight, to nine, ten guys or whatever skill players. So there's a good chance you know a couple of them get injured. So I would rather have great depth at the important positions than just you know for instance just take a tight end right now just for the sake of doing it. Right, I'm not going to do that. So even though um, it's more of like a rookie mistake, a lot of newer fantasy guys play uh, take. Um, in the bigger leagues, right? Like I said, more more players, more opportunity for your guys to get hurt. So you want depth at the pl- uh, at the positions that really matter. Um, so uh, you know, I love Darius guys here. Even Marlon Mack has crazy upside. Love Rex. Like I, I would be happy owning Rex and Sony Michelle. I think they're both going to eat. I think that. Um, and if one gets injured, like the other one is a great bet to absolutely destroy in in fantasy. And I actually want to talk about. All play. Look at the number. This is just all number of offensive plays last year. New England, 1,283. Number one in the NFL. Almost like 350 more plays than the last ranked NFL team. Where is number 32? Cincinnati, 927 plays, which is less than 350 less. So just the sheer volume of opportunity that's available in that offense. You guys have to, you got to think of it, think of it at, at that pace, right? 350 extra plays is so many. So while you, while you can look at percentages in terms of how, how much percentage of, you know, of touches is Sony Michelle going to get, that number can be lower and he could still produce as, as a monster in fantasy because the sheer number of volume uh, plays that are available in the offense and the number of times they score, right? The number of goal line opportunities that are available there he doesn't need the entire piece of it in order to still have a large number of it just by volume itself. So that's something to take into consideration when we're talking about specifically Sonny Michelle and, and the Pats backfield. Um, God, I love guys. I'm probably going to take another quarterback here, though, um, just because there's probably going to be another just because no one picked the quarterback. So there's, I'm sure there's going to be another run here. Um, I'll go. I'll go with Mariota. There goes one, two, three, three quarterbacks. OK. And Geis is uh Geis is still available. Interesting. Geis is available. Someone took Chris Hogan last time. I'm pissed about that. Um, he was my stay woke Saturday pick. Every every week on uh, Instagram on on Saturday and my email list, I send out one sleeper that I absolutely love. All all summer I'm gonna be doing that. So if you want to go follow me on on the gram, bdge underscore fantasy football. You can sign up for the newsletter email list. I, I shoot out one bust, one sleeper, one tip or trick, fantasy football related every single week leading up to your draft. You could do that on uh, bigdogsfantasy.com. The email list is on the bottom of the homepage. Sorry, guys. I'm, uh, the energy is real low today. I'm uh, I'm hurting a little bit from this weekend. I apologize. So my throat hurts a little bit. I got to stop going out and being a POS. Um, where are we at, though? Okay, so guys is still available, man. I'm this is a lot of running backs I like. I don't hate Sammy Watkins down here. He's not a guy I love, but at this price, I ain't mad about it. Okay, so and you also, yeah, like Mitch Trubisky is a great guy to pick in a draft like this because you don't have to start him, but he's a guy with pretty big upside. So, you know, keep him on your bench. Great starting uh, schedule to open the season, too. He's in that article that's coming out soon, um, video. Uh, Trubisky's a guy that a lot of people are banking on, on like a breakout, right? So you could take him, and it's not a heavy investment, and you don't have to start him right away if you have two other quarterbacks already. And if he does break out, then boom. Right. He's your third quarterback or he's obviously going to take over a starter if, if he does end up breaking out. So he's another really good pick in this draft. Um, right now, I don't have much depth at wide receiver or running back. Um, but since quarterback is obviously the most important pick or the most important position in this uh, in this type of league, Mitch is a fantastic pick here, in my opinion. Um, the fact that Darius guys just went all the way down there is fucking crazy to me. So I don't have a tight end yet, which I'll still probably wait on um, because you can get a guy like Trey Burton. You can get a guy like George Kittle. I would say, though, um, it 
maybe is a little bit more important to get a tight end in this league. One that you're not like banking, like George Kittle. I love, right. You guys know he's one of my like sleeper breakout picks for tight end. However, of course, anytime there's a breakout pick or, or someone that you're projecting to, to, to do well, there's risk involved if it doesn't work out. Um, and you don't want to roster multiple tight ends in this type of league format because you want those roster spots to one have you want your skill positions because like i said more players more chance of getting hurt two you want to roster like i already have three quarterbacks possibly a fourth quarterback so you want those those roster spots are super valuable in a league like this and uh, since tight end is probably the least important position for a league like this um, you don't want to have to take a George Kittle and then also roster someone else just in case he doesn't work out. So it might be a little bit more important to look at a tight end that, that you're, that's more consistent maybe or that you have more faith in and actually producing on a week over week basis. But that's just a little, little caveat there. Um, I would look at value and I'm still seeing good names on the board. I'll probably wait on a quarterback again, probably take someone worth more upside later on in the draft, like a, maybe one of the rookies. But for right now, um, Randall Cobb. So I'm getting a lot of questions about Randall Cobb. I'll take him here. Um, my thoughts on Randall Cobb are this, right? From the outside point of view, yes, you're probably looking at him and are like, he's the de facto, I hate that word, but everyone uses it in fantasy football, de facto number two wide receiver for an Aaron Rodgers offense. And while that's probably true, the only hesitation I have with Cobb is this, that this Packers offense, there's like something off here. You know what I mean? Um, the last couple of years, there's just been, it seems like they need somewhat of a change. You know, it's just stagnant. Uh, and I feel like behind Devontae Adams, I'm not completely sold on the fact that they just, that Cobb is the absolute number two. And I'm not saying he's going to lose that job, but I, but I, I think the training camp battle is going to be a really, really important one to keep an eye on because they did bring in three wo ro okay, rookie wide receivers. So Devonta Adams is clearly the number one. Then behind him, they have Randall Cobb. They have Geronimo Allison. They have Jamon Moore now. They have ESB, um, Equinemius St. Brown, and they have the whoever the other rookie was. I forget what his name is. Their fifth round pick. Now, obviously, it's not great capital there, and I don't – like your expectations isn't for Cobb to be taken over, but I think it's going to be a, a battle to really keep an eye on throughout training camp and not just assume that Cobb is uh, is the number two. But, you know, all the way down here at pick, whatever I got him at, like in the 10th round is crazy. Obviously, there's, there's tons of upside because we've seen him produce high numbers as the wide receiver too. So he's back in that like clear wide receiver two role that he had behind Jordy Nelson when he had those dominant years. Um few years ago but it's also been a minute since Cobb really produced as like a high level fantasy guy so um, down here there's, not, there's basically no risk to taking Cobb there but if he's his, his ADP I'm sure will start creeping into the sixth seventh round if we hear good reports out of camp so just just my thoughts on it just something a uh, situation I definitely want to keep an eye on in Green Bay just feel like they need a change and I'm not really sure which way that's going to come so what else what else what else what else what else <laughs> So we got Cobb, quarterbacks. I'd probably start looking at tight end now um, unless I see good value. A lot of people are riding this uh, Marshawn Lynch train. They're saying he's a super undervalued pick here at uh, – here down in the 10th, 11th round. They have I, – I would actually agree. I think he was kind of like one of the best players on Oakland at the end of the uh, second half of the year. And, uh, you know, let's look at some game splits. See how he did over the second half as compared to the first half of the year because – you know, he was low-key pretty good, and he got stronger as the season went on, which was surprising because, you know, everyone's like, he's old, he missed so many days of football. It's actually crazy when you think about it, how he just came back last year after not playing. I kind of forgot about that whole situation. That was fun. That was fun watching. Half. Uh, let's look at first eight versus bottom eight. They only played in 15 games. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So second half of the year, Marshawn did pretty damn well. 14 half point PPR fantasy points. Wow. That's actually really good. Let's look at pro football focus and see where he ranked over the second half of last year. Auto correct. I just be typing ignorant things in. 
So when did he really start turning on? So about, yeah, so about week nine. Yeah, he was not good the first half of the year. And you look at the last half of the year. Really turn it on. Marshawn, how you, how you turn? Marshawn Lynch, RB11 over from weeks 9 to 17. That's in standard. PPR, I'm sure he's further down. Jesus, where is he? 13. Okay. So RB11 standard, RB13 PPR. Interesting. So guys, Lynch is a guy to keep on the radar because he was, as you can see here by the stats, pretty damn good at the end of last year. They did bring in Doug Martin now. Remember that, but Martin is much more of a flyer. I think he's on a one year, like kind of prove a deal, low, low money. Um, I think it was just a depth move. And I don't think, I think it's Marshawn Lynch's job to lose. However, he's not heavily involved in the passing game and there are a lot of heads in that backfield. Um, so his his ceiling is probably capped a little bit, but he should go in there as a starter, and uh, we'll see what this offense can do. So Lynch is definitely a guy to to, to remember, and don't just forget about him because he, he was pretty good at the end of last year. Um, I'll probably start looking at tight ends now. Um, Trey Burton, Jack Doyle, dude, I can't look. I I'm I'm kind of holding off on any Indianapolis uh, reviews or analysis until we know what Andrew Luck is doing. And the the bad part of me thinks that Andrew Luck like might not be back ready for the beginning of the season. He still has not thrown a damn football yet. So I don't know. Tyler Eifert, they just had news about him today. Limited at OTAs. He was reportedly moving at half speed and didn't participate in 11 on 11 drills. Back surgery limited Eifert to just two games last year. I'm on schedule. Yeah, I'm uh He's not a guy I'm anywhere near relying on as a tight end this year. So him and Jordan Reed are obviously in the same boat with this injury stuff. Um, as of April 3rd, nope, move a bike here. Move a bike here. I hope you're recording on the right screen now. Um, as of April 3rd, Jordan Reed had surgery on his toes. So that's not a good way to start the offseason. Um, God, like if guys don't, please don't go into the season relying on Jordan Reed or Tyler Eifert to have a breakout year or bounce back year in a big way. They are going to miss time. It's basically a certainty. So um, George Kittle, I am going to go after George Kittle and I'm going to let him sit there for another round because I could probably get him. I don't think four tight ends are going to go off the board. So I'm going to look at what wide receivers we got. Mm, no one I love. I'm definitely going to be looking at some of the – Dallas wide receivers. I'll probably in most of my drafts take Alan Hearns or Michael Gallup, whoever is the cheaper of the two. But guys, you have to remember, right, that is strictly a volume play. Um, but the Dallas Cowboys are one of the pass, the lightest passing teams in the NFL. They're going to be one of the, the most run heavy teams in 2018. Um, so keep that in mind when you're talking about either of those guys as a volume play. They run the ball a ton. They kill a lot of clock. So I'll probably go Marsh on here. Fludge it. Mm. Yeah, I'll go Marshawn. Okay. Okay. What the fuck? Did that just take Jack Doyle for me? That's amazing. I still mess up my my mock draft even while I'm even while I'm going against computer six. So they took Jack Doyle there instead of uh instead of Marshawn Lynch for me. I'm not even sure what I clicked, but whatever. So it doesn't matter. We got the tight end there, that's okay. Um now we're looking at running backs. I mean, at this point, you know, actually, we still don't really have that much depth. So we'll probably still be picking based on not so much value. Like at the end, end of your draft, that's when I want to get guys like Peyton Barber, Corey Clement. Um, what else we got here? I don't know. Guys with like really, really big upside, but very low floors. Even though I still really like a guy like Tariq Cohen. How is he even lasting this long? It's kind of incredible. I'm going to grab I'm, I'm gonna grab me some reek. Love what uh, what Matt Nagy brings to this offense and uh, the experience he has with those playmakers in KC. In terms of guys like Tyreek Hill, he's gonna know how to use Tyreek Cohen. So it's gonna be a good old time. Um, I 
I don't even hate the idea of taking Geronimo Allison with Randall Cobb. I ain't hate that at all. Um, would I start looking at another quarterback now? Yeah, probably. But I don't think I'm going to take him. You know, I love me some Corey Clement, so he will be my mans this year. And then I'll probably stack wide receivers now because um, I have a decent amount of running backs. And I love Anthony Miller. He is my prediction to be the top scoring fantasy rookie wide receiver this year. He's my man. Love him. If you haven't, go go on YouTube and just type in Anthony Miller highlights. He is, he's incredulous. Kenny Galladay, love that. Jerome Wilson. Mm. So it's not, there's not really anything left at running back right now. Okay. Do we have any starting quarterbacks left? Not really. But, you know, now is when, you know, maybe take a guy with upside. Maybe you take a, a Josh Rosen, assume, thinking maybe Sam Bradford gets hurt, or you take Sam Darnold, because there's a very, very good chance Darnold ends up starting a lot of games this year. I highly doubt he's going to be like a productive fantasy quarterback because, you know, if you've seen my, my wild stats on Instagram, there are very, very, very few rookie quarterbacks that are fantasy producers outside of the ones who put up a lot of rushing numbers. So I'm probably still looking at other positional players. If I had to choose one of these two, I'm going to go with Darnold just because, you know, Rosen probably is not seeing the field unless Bradford gets hurt. And I know like the funny joke around fantasy right now is that it's almost a guarantee that Bradford gets hurt. I really hope you guys are seeing me over here. You might not be. You might just be stuck on Jordan Reed's page. I just realized that. But if you're not, I'm actually going to put this back over here. So it'll probably automatically move. Let me see. Hmm. Sorry, y'all. Give me one second. Where did you go? Where did you go? Knock that down. Please be patient with me, guys. I'm so sorry. Okay, well, hopefully this is working. I'm really sorry if it's not. This would be a killer, but it's the end of the draft-ish almost anyway. So if it's not working, just listen to me. Hear me out. Um, also, I would like to uh, plug this. My draft guide is is in the works, guys. It will be releasing. For any of you guys that purchased, it will be releasing on – I'm shooting for a July either 8th or 9th release date. So early July, first-ish, first-ish week of July. Um, and the draft guide, of course, has my has everything in there, man. My ranking, basically compiling all the stuff I've done over the course of this summer into the uh, into one e-magazine, completely interactive. So it's going to be sick. Uh, and for the people that have already purchased it, thank you so much. You will be getting email updates as the summer goes by. Um, you can find it in the link description if you're interested in purchasing it. But Getting down to the wire. So we have the starting lineup. We have depth now. Um, I'm probably taking more high upside guys now. So I'm looking at a guy like Ken Galladay because I think he goes off if someone like Marvin Jones or Golden Tate gets hurt. He just needs the opportunity. That's really all it comes down to. Um, okay, so now now all the quarterbacks are gone. But I have three starting quarterbacks who are, you know, obviously their team starting quarterbacks. So I'm comfortable there. You could take a guy with upside. Uh, who else they got here? Actually, they really have like no one underneath. So um, three quarterbacks is okay, but you got to keep an eye on the waiver wire when you are playing no league. So the other thing I would say as it gets to the end of this, guys, if you are drafting and you're drafting prior to like right before the actual NFL season kicks off, I would say do not take a kicker or a defense. Take guys who are super high upside. Take a guy like Spencer Ware. Take a guy like um, who, who's a backup, right? Corey Grant, even like Jacksonville. So 
you know, if there's time before the season kicks off, that still means there's time for players to get injured, right? What happens if you take Spencer Ware in the 18th round instead of a kicker and then, God forbid, Kareem Hunt goes down with like a serious knee injury? Then you just got the 17th round pick of Spencer Ware, who now is going to be going in like the third or fourth round. So I would do that. And then, you know, you could play out the rest of the summer if uh, if it doesn't, if no one gets hurt. Then you just drop them and then pick up your kicker or streaming defense right before the season kicks off. But that's it's a little it's a little tip that I like to give people. So I'm just gonna go draw my house. I'm just gonna kind of wrap this thing up. Sure, Houston Texans, you got it. Why not? No, I'm not. See, this is what I mean. Like, go with uh, I don't know whoever you whoever you want to pick. Who, whoever you think has a lot of upside. Right? For instance, right? Like I just said Spencer Ware. Maybe I'll take uh, yeah, Nick Foles. Why not? What if Carson Wentz isn't ready? So that's the final team. Um, and guys, when you're doing mock drafts, don't ever, ever, ever go care about what the grade they give you. Like Yahoo will give you an F every single time. It doesn't matter what you do. So that's the final team right here. Winston and Mariota is my starting quarterbacks. Got Trubisky on the bench. We have Marcus, uh, David Johnson, Leonard Fournette, and C-Mac as my starting running backs as well as Sonny Michelle. Love that. A-Rob and Juju. Um, I actually, I'm, I'm a really big fan of this team. I think this is great. I think this is a great team. Some good depth, a lot of upside, a mix of upside and floor on the bench. But that's going to be it today, guys. So if you enjoyed, drop a, a thumbs up on the video. Thank you very, very, very much for sticking around this long. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll be coming at you all summer with fantasy analysis. Big dogs out. I'll be more energetic next uh, next time, I promise. Love you.